Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day today. Um, I want to welcome you to my Facebook page. Uh, this Silver Silk and More tutorial is every Tuesday at 5.30 Central Time in the evening, um, my evening that is, and I get to share it with you guys. My goal is to bring you guys new, fun, creative ideas constantly using my product Silver Silk and um, you know, showing you different ways on how to use it and how to connect um, all the cool end caps and terminators and findings that I have and um, collaborating with a lot of different businesses out there like Jesse James Speeds and, um, you know, Tierra Cast, um, gosh, Softlex Wire. It's, it's an ever-growing community of amazing people that's in this craft world and it's always so much fun. Hey, Teresa, glad you and Greta could join in. Um, my fabulous ambassador. <laughs> hey, Teresa. Um, or Trisha, excuse me. Uh, all of these names keep popping in. I hope you guys are having a great evening tonight. And I'm excited, especially because we get to open up the Sahara Sansi Mystery Kit tonight and make stuff from it. So this will be a lot of fun. Um, I've got three very distinct projects planned, and I'm going to um, then open it up to you guys to post in the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group page. If you are unfamiliar with where to find this, <laughs> you can go directly to Facebook. Sorry, had a quick little missed call there. Uh, you'll definitely want to check out um, the Silver Soap Silky's Facebook group page on Facebook because we've got an amazing group of people that love to create, um, craft, post, share good vibes, which is what it's all about, right? And um, I don't know, to do it with Silver Silk, so it's always fun. Okay, so I am pretty much done babbling. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna turn the camera around because we all we all want to get to the real good stuff here, which is um, of course making stuff tonight. So no special news announcements otherwise. Um, I do have one thing to show you actually before we get to the kids. So let me flip that around. Um, as for what I was gonna mention earlier, I have some new stuff that's coming out soon. It's not quite. Um, available yet, but I'm definitely getting to um, product innovation, which is, you know, trying to figure out new ways to make the product better. And one thing I thought of was I wanted to bring back hollow mesh because this was something for me that was very, um, it was a very cool product and I wanted to I want to make sure that it got a lot of usage in different ways and the product that, that it was in its previous evolution just wasn't really working because it was too small to, um, I don't know, to fill stuff in with. I, we, I couldn't even put in beads or wire and I know you guys saw me struggle through some of my, some of my tutorials on that. It was embarrassing as it was, um, it had to, I had to, you know, kind of figure out new ways to create with it. And um, I don't know, so for me, I, I'm sorry, I'm also like trying to make sure I share to all the groups so people can see me live. Um, I wanted to make sure that the, the product was big enough to put in beads. And so what I'm doing with it is that I'm actually creating a five millimeter mesh, which is gigantic and really great for putting in bicone crystals. Um, I really do wanna just open one up and show you. Oops. What it looks like up close. I mean, look at that and look how big that hole is. So it's, it's so much better. It is so much better. It's, um, it's gonna be very, very versatile. I can put in leather up to three, four millimeters. So it's gonna be pretty substantial moving forward. And so I'm eager to get to tutorials on this as well. Um, I know you guys would be as soon as it's out too, but I'm planning to upload a ton of product online, but I'm restructuring how that product page works as well. Because right now it's kind of hard to search for all the cool colors and stuff. And what I'm doing 
is making sure that all of the pictures and stuff are very clear, that they show off the product really well. And um, yeah, that's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit of a bit of work <laughs> to say the least, but it will be worth it because it'll be so much better. So I just want to give you guys a quick little, like, I don't know, a little tour of that, but I'm gonna start planning on projects probably as soon as next week um, for this hollow mesh. And so I'll be sure to work um, really thoroughly here soon to get um, all these different products back up and running. Uh, Suzanne is asking, is this rose gold? And no, this is actually copper. Um, in some places, I guess it would be considered rose gold, but nope, this is, this is copper and I've got purple. Um, I've got gold and then I've got black. Let me see if I can grab these other colors. I've got black and silver. Silver's being a little bit hard to knit with right now. I don't know why <laughs> I'm doing my best, but um, yeah, it'll be, it'll be five different colors to launch with and then probably five more the following week. I just ordered a ton of new wire um, that I'm really excited about, some new colors in there. So you guys are gonna see an explosion of different colors. Ooh, Debbie is saying, wonder if fiber cords will fit in that, how, like ribbons and sari silk. You know what? I bet they might. Um, I bet they might because that whole, or the, the diameter is just big enough to make that work. So that's pretty cool. All right. We are all wanting to get to the kit. This is going to be so much fun. So this is what you guys ordered. The Sahara Sansi is the theme that I called it. I wanted to do something that was very fall-esque since we're going to, well, we pretty much are, are in fall, aren't we? <laughs> the beginning stages of it. Um, it's still hot in Oklahoma, but um, yeah, I wanted to put together a really fun fall palette. And uh, this was my interpretation of it. And I think there's still two or so kits left, um, but the rest of them sold out pretty quickly. And it was, I don't know, my kits just, tend to sell out really quick. Um, I think I put a lot of love and everything in, as you saw from the sticker earlier, knitted by Nile with love, which is completely true because I did knit these um, by myself, all by myself on my machine. And I wanted to package something really exclusive and cool for you guys. Um, so I came up with this kit. Okay. Uh, copper is my favorite, so let's, uh, that was Sheesh. Uh, thank you, Sheesh. Yeah, I, I love copper. It's a beautiful tone that really matches anything. So in this kit, you got a Tierra Cast bracelet focal, which looks, let me open some of these things up, uh, like this. Um, this is really fun. I was gonna use this tonight, in fact, um, for one of my bracelet tutorials, so that'll be cool. Um, you got three feet of copper capture chain, which looks like this. Of course, we all love the copper. Um, three foot of the silver, which looks like this. And three foot of this special one that I had at this point in time titled the Sansi capture chain, which looks like this. This is a beautiful antique um, antique uh, copper color that's been knitted over silver. So you get a really great brown tone and like these just work all so well together. Isn't that just a great... Like upscale fall palette, I, I think um, is the term that came to mind. <laughs> uh, and then you get a Tierra Cast toggle clasp, which looks like this. I really, really love this clasp. Um, it to me it just reminds me of a sunburst. And I don't know, that, it's so well designed, I think. So this was a really great item to include in the kit. Um, you get a pair of single and double strand end caps in copper. So those are these guys right here. And then you get a mini gemstone and charm mix. Um, so that's this stuff right here. And I've got an exciting design tonight where I get to use all of these different things. I really, I got to say though, I really love these things. <laughs> these are my favorite uh, to include. And I really had no idea of like what they were going to be turned into, but certainly was a really fun thing to add. And of course, if you're gonna have a Sahara Desert, you gotta have a sun, right? So I really thought this was a really cool charm to include. So, and then and you get uh, a series of different stones in here. You got some agate, some uh, sunstone, which is this, this one right here, which has a really neat polish and um, glow to it almost whenever you hold it up to the light. 
And then, um, let's see, I believe this one was an agate too. This looks like a wood bead, but it's actually got a lot of weight to it. Oh, and then these cool shell beads that are earring components, or it could be whatever, I, I guess, but um, it's translucent, which is really cool. I really enjoyed um, finding those and putting those in the t into the kit. So there's some really fun stuff here to work with, for sure. Ooh, I like these white frosty ones too. Um, and I, of course, I just, I don't know, this color palette really speaks to me. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I thought those were cool too. So lots of cool little gemstones and some fun stuff here to work with. And what I wanted to do first was sketch out a couple designs to show you what my process is and kind of what I wanted to make with it. I had mentioned in the, in the description that I wanted to do a color block necklace. What that means is that I've got very specific areas designated to blocks of color, um, hence color blocking. And so for a necklace design, um, I thought it'd be great to have my ends here. Maybe, maybe it's a throwover necklace, which doesn't require a class, so we could do that since we have all our findings here. Um, I'm gonna start with some capture chain and then I'll have a single strand end cap here at the end. Now this can be done all in, let's just say silver. So we've got a silver strand up here and maybe down here is where I wanna add my color or we could go silver up top and do the other colors. It's not gonna matter because again, all the colors match very well. So that blocking, the color block it's totally up to you and how you want to do it. Um, I'm trying to think visually. I think it would be a good idea for me to introduce the silver up here. And then down here, we're going to do Um, our second set of colors. So this will be a double strand end cap, which was, again, both of these end caps were included in the kit. And then this will be our single strand. Okay, and then that pretty much resolves my color blocking, but I wanted to add a little extra something something to it, right? Because we've got all these beautiful beads in this mix and we gotta make it look high end and sophisticated, right? So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to do a little bar here across and we can string on some beads in, a, in whatever order we wanted. And we'll do some simple little wire wrap loops here at the end. And then we'll connect all this together with some jump rings. So this will be a really unusual, fashionable necklace. I think it'll be a cool layout and um, I definitely wanna give it a try with some of these really fun components and stuff that we've got, um, or beads rather for this design. For the bracelet, um, which I definitely wanted to use this little guy here, I might need to grab another pair of end caps to accomplish this, but I thought it'd be cool just to have a simple little double strand end cap where we maybe loop our leftover capture chain, and then we attach our tiara cast finding. And then we could loop this back around and, you know, just do something really simple here. We could use two different colors if we're gonna continue this color block theme, or we can use the same color if we want to. Okay. Um, as far as earrings, it hasn't hit me quite yet, but we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get started on our necklace design. So now that we've got a roadmap, it'll be easy to put it together. The first thing I want to do is start with the middle of my necklace, that little T-bar area. So I think you calling it a T-bar, but it's not really a T-shape. <laughs> it's more like just a, a bar across with our necklace. And so what I'm going to do is use some 20 gauge um, craft wire. This is non-tarnished copper. And I'm just going to give myself maybe about eight inches and then cut the rest off. Let me grab my cutters here. Perfect. 
And then what I'm gonna do is grab a pair of round nose pliers. I had sort of hinted that you guys would need this um, earlier in my video post today. So I am grabbing those, but I also need a pair of, actually I need a pair of chain nose pliers. There we go. Okay, what I'm gonna do at the end, before I even string on my beads, is I'm going to create a wire wrapped loop at one end. To do this, I'm just gonna take my piece of wire I'm gonna have a pretty generous portion here at the top, maybe about two inches or so. Yes, Debbie says, perfect summer to fall transition piece. I agree, my friend. All right, I've created a perpendicular bend in the wire. This is 90 degrees. Then what I like to do is hold that bent wire toward me. And then I want to place it inside of my round nose pliers. And what I can do is actually just bend this around until it kind of hits where the pliers um, and that wire meet. And if you want to, you could definitely lift off, rotate, and then just bend the rest of it in so that the wire now crosses, again, per uh, perpendicularly or at a 90 degree angle, but now I've got a loop at the top. So that'll get me started on my wire wrap loop here. Then what I want to do is take the rest of the wire and just coil it around like that. I want to do this maybe a couple times and then you could simply just trim it off as such. Very easy to do. And then you'll go back in and you'll just pinch. Woo! A little too hard of a pinch there. <laughs> but you'll just go back in and pinch it in so that it doesn't stick out and you've got a perfect little wire wrap loop right there. So now I can do the fun part which is design with my beads. So I've got some beads right here and I now want to put out a little pattern. So let's see, I'll use, um, normally I'd have a bead board, but I want you guys to see my illustration as well, just to let you know what roadmap I'm working here with. So I'm gonna use the little gutter of my book to hold my beads cleverly. Um, ooh, I can't forget the bronzite that was in here too. That was pretty cool. So I'm gonna lay out a quick little pattern here um, with my beads. These all came in pairs and so it'll be easy to kind of configure this. So far that's looking really good. Maybe we'll add, I don't know, some black back in here. Or we could do white at the ends. There's quite a few combinations. So just do what feels right. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to putting some of these beads together. I know with Jesse James beads, they do a lot of work for you by matching up their strands. <laughs> and so for me, that would be a great way to use some of those bead strands in this design. All right, so, ooh, you know what? Let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna string these guys on. And I believe this is petrified wood, if I'm not mistaken, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then I'm gonna take my sunstone and bronzite and this quartz and this banded agate. Loving this pattern, you guys. There we go, look at that. So we've already got a really great pattern established. And so I'm just gonna string the rest of this out like that. And we'll do another loop here at the end. I really love this combination. It kind of takes in all the different colors of this palette and marries them together into one. So now I'll do the same thing. I want to go ahead and create my loop on the other end. So what I'm gonna do is take, I'm gonna take a tapered end of my chain nose pliers. This has a smaller taper in it. And um, what I'm gonna do is create my little bend, just like that, get back to my 90 degree angle, insert in my pliers like so, and work it around just like that to meet back up. I love using this craft wire from Softflex because it's so flexible, it's so forgiving on my fingers, and it has really good hold at the end of the day. Okay, wrap it around a couple times so that looks really good. I'm going to trim just like that and go ahead and 
tuck the rest of that wire back in. That looks really good to me. Make sure that your loops are facing both up um, and that they're not like offset from each other. So that'll be my little T-bar. And what I'm gonna do now is basically construct the rest of the design. There's really not much to it. You can cut the length of this capture chain to your preference. I think for this, if I'm gonna do something that's thrown over the head, probably 24 inches is going to be sufficient enough. So this is perfect. Okay, so I am going to measure or give myself a good measure of 24 inches and I'm just gonna cut the rest of it off and then go ahead and attach um, my end caps in. And I'm using silver, a silver and copper combination. That's totally up to you guys. Um, if you want to have it all copper, then you could definitely use the copper at the top or if you wanted an all silver piece. Some of us don't like to mix metals, some of us do. <laughs> it's totally all your preference. I, for one, love to mix the metals because whenever I look at different colors of metals and different beads and stuff, it's all just colors to me. Um, and I don't know, if they, if they marry well together in a harmonious color format theory way, then to me, it's successful and doesn't even have to match the metals. All right, so to do this, um, this already has little teeth inside of it, so you don't need any glue. You just basically stick the, stick the capture chain in, and then you just press it with your nylon jaw pliers. Sometimes these tend to slip because they're so slippery. So you can start it with a pair of chain nose pliers and give it a, a gentle squeeze, and then go in with your nylon jaw pliers and really just show it who's boss, right? You'll want to make sure that the seam is pretty closed whenever you crimp this. So I'm just going to give it a couple extra squeezes there, but really it is secure. And you'll want to do this to both, both sides, to both ends. So push it in, go in with your regular chain nose, give it a gentle squeeze, enough to just squish it to get those teeth working inside of that cap, and then go in and really squeeze it in with your nylon jaws. There you go. All right, so the idea here is that we're going to connect this together and then we'll have our other part of our design. Sorry guys, ignore this illustration from last week. <laughs> Back to our drawing up here. So we're gonna connect this and then we're gonna connect the bottom part of our necklace as we drew out earlier. And so what I'm gonna do is kind of measure this out. We can make this super long or super short. It's up to you guys um, how you want to do your necklace. But I think, let's see. I have plenty of silver silk left over from this piece, that's for sure. Ooh, I love the drape on this, though. Isn't that just awesome? I, here, let me scoot out a little bit so you guys can really see it. The drape on this is going to be fantastic. And I want to offset them just a little bit so that they don't necessarily have the same length either. And that looks really good to me. So I'm gonna probably do it there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my, where did I put them? Ah, oh, here they are, a little blind. <laughs> I'm gonna grab my double strand end caps and these work exactly the same way as did my single strand end caps. So the idea here is that I kind of just laid it out on my table. You can absolutely get a neck form or whatever is comfortable for you. Um, in this case, I'm just kind of estimating the length here. My guess is that this is probably about 12 to, well, maybe longer than that, probably about 14 inches of chain. This will be for my bottom loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off. There we go. And for my inner one, I want it to be a couple inches shorter because I want it to stagger. So we're looking at probably about 13 or so inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off so that they're both lined up. Perfect. And now I can go ahead and connect all of my strands together. I wanna to pinch in those ends there and then use the channels to hold everything in place of my end cap. And then again, just go in and squeeze it gently with your 
chain nose pliers. I did it very, very gently so, so that there's no um, marks on my end cap there. And then go in and really just squeeze this. Oop. If it slips out, that's all right. At least we've got the strands in there. <laughs> so they didn't go flying across the room this week like they did last week, so that's always a bonus, right? If there's a little bit of silver silk sticking out, don't worry about it, just trim it off. And make sure that your, your designs, your strands are lined up correctly and that your logo is sticking up so that you're on the right side of your end cap. we go. Again, I'm just going to press this in, get it nice and tucked in, go in with my regular chain nose pliers, just squeeze a little bit, and then go in with my nylon jaw pliers and give it a nice press. There we go. And my end caps have a brass core to them, so they're going to be a little bit more, I don't know, they're going to require a little bit more of a squish than um, some other end caps out there. And that's just because it's a high quality brass plating and you know it's gonna hold permanently once it's squeezed together. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna grab some six millimeter jump rings. Um, you're probably gonna need about really three of them, but I'm just having some extra out here for other purposes. And I went ahead and opened it up. To open it, you want to make sure that you have two pliers if you need them, and you're gonna open just in, up and down, not out, because if you open it out, it ruins the shape of them. So I'm going to connect first my end caps, my single strand and double strand end, end caps together. So we'll do that. Already a beautiful color block necklace. Make sure that both end caps have the logo facing up again and that it's consistent across the board. Those little attention to details makes a huge difference for your end product, trust me. Okay, same thing here. Brilliant. Okay, so now the idea here is to connect a jump ring to each of the loops. So I'm gonna start with, let's see if I can find these. My jump rings are so well done that I can't ever find the seam to them. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, that's good quality product, I guess, but it's also kind of silly that I can't ever find the seam to them. <laughs> Like, is this soldered shut all the way? I don't know. Until I magically open it up. Okay, so I've connected my, my bar with my double strand end cap, and now I want to connect my end cap to, my single strand end cap to, where's this one at? Oh, here it is, okay. And then I want to connect my single strand end cap to that bar. So this will balance everything out in the end. You have a nice connection to everything. You know it's gonna be nice, strong, and stable. I think the jump rings add a nice aesthetic touch to all of this because you have this like little rosette that happens in the middle of your necklace and it's secure. So to me, I think it's a win-win. Yes, M says, I hear little Abby Berta in there. And absolutely, um, that's, she's a great resource for really learning some really good fundamentals for jewelry pieces um, and jewelry making techniques. So I highly recommend checking out her channel, Abby Berta um, with The Bead Place on YouTube. And she's made some silver silk designs for me too before um, in some of her tutorial videos. So I really love her. Silver Silk loves her. <laughs> She's an amazing designer though, seriously. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and connect this together. Ooh, my jump ring just off a little bit. There we go. 
Okay. So this is our completed, whoops, our completed design. So you can see that it took no time together to make something that is really exquisite and expensive looking. And wait till I get it on the dress, on my little neck form here, because it's gonna look really, really cool. And this doesn't have a clasp at the end, but you could just as easily add, you know, the uh, clasp that's included in the, uh, the, excuse me, included in the kit at the end of this. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna move on to our next design, which was the bracelet. Um, which is this guy, it's gonna be this guy right here. And I saved a little bit of silver because that's what I had intended on using, but now I'm wondering, well, that's probably not gonna be enough for one thing. Unless we put some beads, ooh, 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 I know. I'm gonna modify the design a little bit because that's what I do. <laughs> All right, so I have my silver silk chain, the silver color left over. You can obviously use any of the other colors um, that you have left over, just depending on how you want to do it. But I've got all these fun beads and stuff left over, so let's not waste them, right? So what I think I'm gonna do is cut this in half, just like this. And this will give me a shorter little loop, like we talked about earlier, but um, this will be a good opportunity to attach a couple of beads at the ends of our little chain. And we get some mixed textures in there, and how is that always, you know, that's always to me a good thing. So I'm going to grab some other end caps off the shelf. This is going to be in silver color. Here we go. And what I'm going to do is connect this together very easily, like we did before, just not too long ago. <laughs> Stick it in and give it a gentle press with your chain nose pliers. Go back in with nylon jaws and make sure that seam is nice and shut. Always pull. If it feels a little bit loose, then it's not gonna crimp correctly. In this case, I, did, I was able to pull it out, so I didn't do it correctly. So what I'm gonna do is grab my chain nose pliers and just Give it a nice gentle squeeze open again. Go back in and do the same thing. You wanna really make sure that it is holding quite well with the channels and everything that's in there. So always better to check and pull. Okay, here we go. Ah, this still didn't squeeze it right. Okay, third time's a charm, right, guys? <laughs> okay, it's gotta be it. There we go. Whoops. All right, same thing on this side. Okay, so I have all of this attached together now. And what I wanna do is kind of just maybe simplify this connection process here. So I am gonna grab a couple more jump rings. Here we go, one, two. And I'm gonna connect my finding here, my little bracelet connector to my silver silk chain. So let's see, let's see if I can get through the knits and do this. Hopefully my jump rings will be big enough to support all this. And if not, I've got some bigger jump rings. These might be a little bit on the tinier side compared to how big that chain is. Oh, never mind. maybe this will work. Yeah. Cool. Let's 
gonna hold nice and securely, that's for sure. So that looks really good to me. I'm going to now connect this together and then we'll add some beads at the end. Love it, love it. Very cool. Okay, now I have to, I think what I wanna do, because we're keeping with our color block theme, I think, and copper is, is one of those things. So I'm gonna stick with my copper, um, copper colored wire here, the 20 gauge craft wire. Now what I wanna do is connect some beads here at the end. So I'm gonna make some series of simple loops with some beads on them. All right. So what color beads do we want? I've got plenty of these guys left, so let's use these. I love them. They got these really great patterns on them. It's perfect. So let's do this. Let me make a simple loop at one end and then string it on. Okay, there we go. To make your simple loop, this is something that I enjoy teaching, I think, time and time again, just because I think a lot of folks have some trouble with making simple loops. Uh, um, and that's it's kind of like one of the more primary item, the primary techniques of jewelry making. So to do this, you want to gra grab your round nose pliers and a piece of wire and just insert it into the round nose tip there, making sure that nothing really sticks out. If there's a little bit sticking out, it's going to mess up your loop. So you want to just feel on top and make sure that there's nothing poking out up there. And then what I do is I turn it perpendicular to me so that my wire is sticking straight to my left side. And then I just come in and kind of give my thumb a gentle press right over it. And then just keep turning until it starts to feel uncomfortable. When it does feel uncomfortable, that means you'll have turned probably halfway through the loop. So what you, I like to do is I just, you know, kind of reposition myself. I unclamp my round nose pliers, take it back in to where it feels comfortable or where my hand is, you know, back to part one where it's perpendicular and then continue to finish out my loop. You'll want to make sure that the tip of the wire touches the base part of that wire, just like that. So, I would say if you're still making lopsided loops, make sure you practice this first step over and over and over again. Really basic, but it is it does make a huge difference in the way that your loop looks. All right, so now what we have to do is what we call breaking the neck. This stem or the base part of this wire is the neck and this is the head. So we're gonna turn this little sad guy and break his neck <laughs> to make sure that he's or she is upright that they are upright, like just like that. So that's that's perfect. Um, and I've got a little bit of a gap there, so that's all right. I could just squeeze this together and all of my wire is now perfect looking. So what I'll do is I'll string on my bead and I'll repeat the same process, but I will be cutting off um, any excessive wire that is over a half inch from where the bead ends. So I've got about a half inch here to work with. Okay, same thing, except I just don't have a larger base wire to work with. You can also lift up and just kind of sculpt it in. I tend to do that as well. Everyone has their own style for making simple loops. So practice what feels comfortable and more importantly, the end product. I've got a little bit of a gap there. What I'm gonna do is cut off the part of my loop of how big that gap is. So that gap is probably about two millimeters. So I'm just gonna cut off two millimeters of my loop, go back in and stick it into my pliers and continue to roll it in just like that. Come back in, grasp the neck and give the loop some chiropractic care there, just nice and upright as you can see. I made sure that both of my loops are facing the same direction. Although I think on this, no, I do want it to face that direction, so that's correct. Okay, so same thing. You'll wanna attach your loops in the same fashion as your jump rings and 
Same thing on this side, so I'll do this a little bit quicker this time. Okay, come back in, oops, with these. Chiropractic care, breaking that neck, making sure it's all upright. You know, it's like, it's whatever it takes to explain a technique is really what we come down to. <laughs> so that's why I've got a lot of weird sayings. It's because it's somehow if it resonates in your minds of, okay, he's saying this particular technique is done this way. And if you couldn't remember a step, maybe you can now after learning some of my weird terms. <laughs> and Sarah Ellis's, because she, she has some really good terms um, for her type of techniques, for her wire working techniques. So we've all, we've all got our own library of terms for sure. Uh, Katie says, I love the pattern on those beads. Aren't these fabulous? They're just really, really cool. I think they were perfect for the kit. Okay, so now I would just basically put on a clasp at the end. Um, I could attach this guy. I feel like it's a little bit too big for this piece. Um, so I might save the clasp for a necklace later on. Um, of course, you guys can, whatever design you come up with, um, it'd be cool to see what you guys do with the clasp. And if you are designing with these kits, please post them to the Silver Silk Silkies Facebook group page. I definitely want to see what you're making. And I know the rest of the group members definitely want to see what y'all made with the kits as well. And if you haven't made with a kit, but you do love silver silk and you find yourself with some um, eventually, then please post your designs on there. We love to see everyone's works. We are a positive and just really welcoming and optimistic community of artists and designers. And we love to see what you do. We want to be inspired. We want to be inspired by what you were inspired by. So that's my bracelet in a nutshell. Really cute. Let me turn that back around. There we go. Oh, I love that. Very cool. And it's got design all the way around. So I think that's special. Okay. And I promised some earrings because I wanted to use this somehow. So I don't know. I'm on a double strand end cap like thing here for <laughs> this evening. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to use another double strand end cap or not. But I'm kind of tempted to. And I really love the earrings that I made in my previous kit, which was the Sahara Sansi, or excuse me, the Amazon Rainforest. So let me grab another pair of end caps. This time, I'm gonna use a different color. I'm going to use Dark Rhodium, um, one of my favorite colors. And I think this is gonna be a nice, really like, I don't know, just a different way to use them with this color. It'll be a very neutral tone design. So I've got this beautiful, what I call the Sansi capture chain which was the antique, uh, antique copper that is knitted over silver ball chain. So I think I'm gonna use that and just create something really simple. I love this loop design. I don't, I think someone else came up with it from Silver Silk ages ago. And I think it wasn't ever further explored of like what all you could attach to it and do things with. I've seen it plain, but I've seen and have done some attaching myself to it. But this will be a good opportunity to, I think, use up some of these charms in a fun and fantastic design. And we're getting lots of practice in crimping, of course, which is never a bad thing. So I just cut a little bit of my leftover, whoops. And now I'm just going back and attaching all of that. You can, of course, make the size of the, of the loop that you wish, um, but I think I'm just gonna attach that on there. You could definitely double this. Ooh, we might double it, because that's kind of cool. I don't know. There's so many possibilities. We could not double it and just have that on there. But I, I kind of love that. And I've got gold here on the top of this um, charm. So I think what I'm gonna do is use gold color jump rings for this. Again, whenever you're thinking about colors, it's good to have a focused palette. I don't mind that there's silver in here because there is white in this quartz tooth uh, charm. And as far as where the dark black comes from, 
I think because I'm using white and this neutral brown color, it's going to work out well. We've got this really great pop of gold in it. So to me, you have a simplistic design as we do here, but what the elaborate part comes from is the amount of colors that we've introduced it into, the, into this palette. So one way to think about this as I'm, I guess, formulating my rationale for this uh, selection of items and, and design is that maybe I've chosen a simpler design but the amount of details with the colors and the knitted wire adds enough, I don't know, enough zhuzh to it to make it seem elaborate and very designery. Okay, so now I just need my, oh, I love that. See, just sometimes simplicity is okay. I just need a pair of, whoops, uh, some little ear hooks here to complete this. So I added a few extra items <laughs> that were not in the kit, but I think these are basic stuff. Um, you, pro you definitely probably have um, some earring hooks in your kit. And I would say if you don't have enough of the double strand end caps, um, I highly suggest getting some. They are so versatile and easy to use and the amount of colors that they come in is really great to work with almost any piece. There we go. Oh, that looks so good. Okay, so I got to match my second earring for this design. So I'm just going to do a rough measurement here. That looks pretty good. If you guys wanted a solid measurement, I'd say this is probably closer to about three inches of knitted wire chain uh, or capture chain. And then grab my end cap here. You want to make sure that your wire isn't twisted around because if one's twisted, like, see how weird and wonky that becomes? So just kind of shake your wire out and gather it as best as you can to make sure that nothing is twisting on you. All right, so now push it into the end cap. Again, remember to go in with your chain nose softly. Go in with your nylon jaws, not so softly. Perfect, the seam is closed, everything's secure. I just kind of give this a little bit of a, a push up to make it nice and bouncy. <laughs> it does flex outward, so it gives my loop a nice round shape. Ooh, like you could attach these little sun charms to it. You could cut off the top part of that sun charm and glue it I've done that before with charms. You could glue it to the end cap so that it makes like this really, I don't know, designed end cap, or just glue it backwards actually, because you can attach stuff to it, right? So that's one way, another way to design something. Um, lots of possibilities. Okay, where's my other tooth charm? Here we go. Yay! And I'm gonna push that in. I don't know if you're as not as graceful as I am at this point in time anymore because I tend to open up things with my nails, with my fingers. I know that my tools are right there, but I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not a graceful person, guys. Sometimes that chain is just a wee bit a little too thick. There we go. As long as the out product, or the product that you have at the end is looking good, doesn't matter that you opened it up with your teeth, <laughs> if you must. Okay, last thing here is to attach my earring wire. Whoops, I always go in with this backwards, there we go. And voila, we've got, Oh, and I attach my little, um, teeth the right direct or I don't know I really don't know what those are some sort of shark teeth is what they remind me of um so perhaps that's the shape <laughs> I'm thinking of. okay so I'm gonna flip you guys back around Ugh, what a design sprint we had you guys that was so much fun and so many possibilities with the Sahara Sand Sea kit I'm only actually doing the one class this time around normally I would have done up to three or four, but um, as new stuff is 
getting produced as new colors are coming in. I want to make sure to give them some love as well. But to show you guys what we did, check this out. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's so expensive looking and I did it with just the kit components. Um, so you could put in the charms, you could put in any other beads that you want, but really a few jump rings, some 20 gauge wire, and then the kit, that's really all you need. Um, really fun design. I love it. This is something that I would wear with a different, maybe a different bead selection, you know? Gotta give it a little bit. I'm not as glamoury of a person. I like stuff that's like hard metal. <laughs> Some of us do. Um, totally your preference though. But um, I hope you will grab the last couple of kits remaining. You can grab those at www.silversilkonline.com and um, make some of these fun, fun designs that we did tonight. And while you grab those kits or have the kit already, please post your designs to the Silver Silk Silky's Facebook group page. We would love to see what you were inspired by and get inspired from your designs. You can catch me on Instagram and YouTube. Um, of course, Facebook, 5.30 in the evening, Central Time. You can always catch me here doing a tutorial. So mark your calendars for that. And um, I think that's pretty much it uh, as far as, oh, I'm on Pinterest now too. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure I keep up with all of my posts there too. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Hi, Mimi. Hi, Wanda. I'm glad, um, glad you guys could join in. And um, we, I think, had a fabulous time. I, I love catching up with you guys and seeing what you're doing. And please, uh, if you have any questions, just give me an email. Get me an email to orders at silversilkonline.com. You're welcome, Sylvia. Um, I just got your order out a couple days ago, in fact, so you should be receiving that here in a few weeks. Sylvia is my international friend. <laughs> so packages take a little bit longer, but um, I try and keep the shipping cheap and, um, you know, readily available to whatever country you're from. Just let me know and I will hook you up with some shipping um, to your respective country with Silver Silk. All right, guys, thank you so much. I will catch you again on Tuesday. I'll have a new project by then. All right, Mwah. good night.